Hello everyone, this is Professor Reha here with an answer to a question. Uh, how do you make a dual-wielding pistol melee build? And, uh... This will eventually become a series, because uh, this is actually a pretty fascinating request, and it's a build I haven't actually looked at in a while. It's It's been a, a hot minute since I pulled this off, but it is something that I think would interest a lot of people, which is the dual-wielding melee pistol build which is going to come down to some very interesting essential skills. This is an extremely directed build that we are essentially going to run very aggressively here. Now, I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time wandering around with these zombies here. We're going to kill the ones we need to kill on our way over. We have a health potion we might as well use here. But we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Now, this, as I stated in my video, this is a purifier build, which means Demolitionist Inquisitor. And it's going to get very interesting, actually, pulling this off. But it turns out to be an extremely effective build if you're smart with it. If you're, well, I can't even say smart. That's not the word I'm looking for. If you're careful with it. You build correctly, it pays dividends. And it's definitely one of the more unusual directed builds I've ever built. We're actually going to start right off the top with Stun Jacks. We're going to set this up. Then. I accidentally used um, a rift there. So we're going to use Stun Jacks right off the top because that'll wipe out most of our immediate problems right away. It works great on Kizog. We're just going to grab some key pieces of equipment here very quickly you get a small amount of very specific level ups but yes this is going to be that bizarre build that you're going to look at and say that's you're going to hear and say that's never going to work but it does. I can rush it to, m I think, most of what actually the core concept here is going to wind up being. At the least, if I play my cards correctly and I play this smart. No, no, no. Come on. There you go. So we're just going to grab some specific items here to level up a little bit. And then we're going to basically roll very aggressively into... The Burial Hill. We're gonna kill Barog just for the experience because he's worth quite a lot. Throw out some stun jacks, move forward a little bit to get better shots. These single pistols temporary. Don't worry about it. This may take a couple of videos, but it's a little side project I don't have a problem working on at the same time. I just finished Resident Evil. Uh so I'm okay with this, ultimately. But I'll, I'll probably delve into this character a little bit simultaneously. And then switch back to... Well, I'll probably simultaneously be carrying on both at the same time, in all honesty. And let me see. Do we have anything here we need? Uh, not really, no. We'll take this temporarily, but we don't actually need it. Shoot you just quietly. There we go. I only wish I had one of these characters set up ahead of time. I almost, uh took a, a bit of a... I almost kind of took a shortcut by busting out my um, uh, a saboteur build. I believe it's a saboteur. No, it's not a saboteur. Uh, it's a... I need that later. Uh, a, a, a Nightblade Inquisitor combo that I have. I almost busted that out and used that, but then I remembered, wait a minute, that doesn't work because the Nightblade doesn't contribute anything to the dual-wielding melee build. Because it relies upon lightning damage and 
stun jacks to keep you alive, at least partially. Stun jacks is only the earliest part of this build to get, and it is fairly effective in terms of wiping out pretty substantial targets from close range because all those stun jacks are hitting for large quantities of damage. Stun jacks are very badly balanced for the start because they just hit so hard with all three of them. I have prepped a... What do you call it there? A uh, uh, merit, so we can actually skip a large quantity of levels by pulling some pretty specific actions. And then come back to this difficulty as needed. But yeah, your first few level ups, I actually just basically started recording it at this point, so that way if you wanted to perform the build, you would know what to open with. Uh, and you're going to want to open with the stun jacks right away. And Kizog will show why. I took a very specific route here because I'm slightly in a hurry, but also I don't really need that much experience. Kizog will scale appropriately, so it's not that big of a deal. Notice I'm making zero attempt at running away. This will become a habit for you as you build up your skills and your equipment. If any time would like to hit. The offensive ability is very low at this point. We're actually just going to blast you like that. Now, of course, this is veteran, so we can sustain a large quantity of damage from these early on enemies, so it's not that big of a deal. But... You know, you start getting soldiers in here, you get Kizog, and then you're you're gonna your first instinct is gonna be, oh, run away, but you're really not going to want to do that. Any range damage you do will just be bonus damage from before they can get to you, before you start busting out the actual damage. Kind of like the softener, really. This is one of my favorite builds because it can deal with pretty much all threats pretty evenly across the board. For example, even though it's Ideally designed for melee, I can take out this corruption from a long range here. Now, obviously, at this point, with such a low level, it's very difficult to see what I'm talking about, but that will change very shortly, trust me. I just me basically need to kill Kizog and then activate my merit, and then I'll be rolling in a large quantity of experience and passing through a lot of these levels very quickly. Soften them up a little bit. Go ahead and work you. Soften them up a little bit. That actually killed... Oh, no, most of them. Hold on. We got this guy. So, yeah, this, this will be a little bit interesting for a lot of you. Alright. Kind of useless, but at least it gives us a little bit of health. Never a bad thing. Basically, you're just going to want to run up on the big threats, stun jack them to death in the early game, and then uh, move on. Whether or not this, you know, changes a little bit based on how your armor goes. This does have a very heavy focus on lightning damage, quite obviously. Flame Touch is absolutely amazing with this. And this is one of the few builds that I will pretty consistently build, um... Vindictive Flame, that's what it's called. I had a brain cramp there, I forgot what it was called. Because it's incredibly effective with this build. Thank you for the free tonic. And then we're just going to run up on Kizog. Oh, we're going to actually deal with you really quick first, because if we just leave you alone, you're going to hurt pretty hard. We'll just use potions as needed. Expect to use... Actually, we're going to rotate... Okay, we're going to have to move slightly, because he's got the... There we go. It's gone now. We're going to have to rotate a little bit here. I don't have quite the armor I need at this particular junction to really carry this off. Quite yet. I also don't have uh, Storm Spread, I don't have Bursting Rounds, I don't have pretty much anything I need at this particular junction. Come here. 
But you're still going to want to go into melee with him to ensure all three jacks hit him, and also to make sure that none of these other smaller enemies body block. Some spalders, which is nice. Don't need any of these. Uh, go ahead and pop the spalders on. We're going to need that once we hit level 10. Uh, we're just going to pop up here and look for some aether crystals. Again, we're skipping the shrine. It's veteran. Oh, hello. We'll actually kill you really quick. Grab some aether crystals because I'm always having a shortage of those. That's fine. Alright, we have no constitution, which is fairly interesting, but that's fine. Boom. Increase that a little bit more. Throw some out. Soften them up, because there's a lot here. Throw that out there. Okay, we died, but that's fine. Gets us an easy back. We don't really care about the experience. It's so little at this point that it doesn't even matter. I need some time. You need some time. Time to end the evil that marshals before us. Do I have the Aether Crystals I need for this? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Plenty of Aether Crystals. Alright. We do not have the scrap. We can pull some out of our storage really quick. That's fine. And then we're just going to waltz up here. And talk to the skill lady, uh, Sedina. There we go. You can never remember her name. We're going to go ahead and start up on Fire Strike because that is something you will want for this build. Go ahead and grab the Merit and the Scrap that we need. Oh wait, I put it over here. Uh, the Scrap, we need three. Oh, we need two. We need two. Put the these in my Aether Crystals because we just really need those. Two Scrap. Deliver the Scrap and then rip to some very choice locations. Now we're gonna rift to. Hold on, hold on. Before we, there we go. All right, first place we're gonna go to is Conclave of the Three. I'm gonna grab all these books for some early experience. You don't necessarily have to do this part. I'm only doing this so I can kind of hasten the the move to at least some of the concept here. Since at the very least in this video I want to get down the, the core concepts of how this build works. And then kind of finish out at least exemplifying the, the build as I go along. Okay, so... And then we're just going to crack this open. Sure and sure. Okay. So we have that. And then we're going to just pop to... Actually, we need um, Leo Vinus's ring. We need both of the Leo Vinus's rings. We're not putting the points in yet because I want to establish certain things first. Uh, yes, here we go, here we go. Now we're going to rift to Coven's Refuge. Where we will grab the books and read those. There should be two, if I'm remembering correctly. There's one here. 
read that. Equip these. Inquisitor. We're actually going to want to rush to a very specific... Uh, maybe I'll pull out that out of the fire strike temporarily, see if I can rush to the storm spread, which is the foundation of this. can equip this, which would be fairly helpful. Which we will do. Pierce damage. Physique 83? That's fine. And here's the other book. Now, if you're concerned about the massive boost in stats here, don't be too concerned very early on. It's not really going to be a problem. It's going to basically increase your health. Obviously, it's going to increase the amount you're doing through your pierce damage, which, of course, you're dual-wielding pistols. You're going to be doing pierce damage, and it's going to be increasing the amount that your lightning and fire damage is going to be doing. So, overall, once you hit storm spread, you're pretty much set to go melee. Of course, we have this here. Actually, I should probably put this on. So you have the two pistols now, at this particular point. And then we just need to grab these books here, switch to some different difficulties for the free experience, see how far we can get here, and basically run with that. Oh, no, this is the wrong house. Silly me. We'll have him auto run while we go this way. There we go. And that's fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and exit to main menu. Hit elite. Pop back in. And have some conversations with some people. Yes, yes, yes. Get the free bits. Get the experience, more importantly. There we go. And... Actually, hold on. I want to pull out these two points here, just so I can rush to storm spread a little bit faster, because that is sort of foundational to it. Okay, we've done that. Pop out to ultimate really quick, do the same. Yeah, we know. I think we're quite going to make this. We need the explorers set on, though. Uh, put this on. Put this on. We can sell that, actually. And this. There we go. Alright. For a start, that's all we need minimally. Alright, we're going to have to do some mild adjustments. We're going to take out the stun jacks temporarily, it's fine. That's what we really want to hear. Stun jacks are primarily to at least get you to be able to deal with Kizog. Now that we have that, we can actually return to Veteran, because we don't have the armor to carry off anything higher right now, because I've prepped absolutely diddly squad for this character, other than the merit. So we're going to just go on ahead and take on Villoth. It's fine. Now, the core concept here is that you are storm striking pretty much everyone nearby to death. 
Now, these enemies are small enough where only some of the shots are necessarily going to hit them. But with larger enemies like bosses that generally take up more space, all your shots are going to hit them. And then we just basically run at everything melee. Now, keep in mind, I am level 17 in an area that is drastically, drastically underleveled. So actually, we're going to skip most of this, realizing this. We're just going to go straight for Villoth with the very little equipment we actually have on us right now, which is fine. This is the fastest blitz run you've ever seen. <laughs> Let's just move right through these people, it's fine. Goodbye. None of you are worth my time. Yes, yes, yes. Look at how little damage they do. I'm hoping for a totem. Oh wait, a hero. We can do this, actually. Melee this. See, notice that all of my shots are hitting him. Rotate around just because we don't necessarily want to deal with that poison. But notice all my my storm spread shots are hitting Herna the Dread Widow. All of them. Because she's wide enough of an enemy for this to work. And this is going to be most of the uh, enemies that you're going to really need to deal with. Okay, now that we have that, melee you some more. I'm just killing these guys because they're just while I'm waiting for the poison to fade. Some of these enemies are actually potentially dangerous. Some of these are not. The small ones are pathetic, but the larger spiders are fine. Notice how extremely effective that was at the close range. That's really what you're doing is you're just taking advantage of the the storm spread and other sp normally spreading abilities, and you're basically just guaranteeing all of them hit an enemy because you're in melee and they can't dodge it. There's no spreading if they can't move. This applies to full spread with the, the stun jacks as well. Uh, with Inquisitor's Seal, you get some extra defense and everything. Hello there, delicious totem. Yes. We'll wipe out the local slit first really quick. But that's all you're really doing, because if you use storm spread from a distance, if you're a typical user of storm spread, you're shooting at the enemy from a longer distance, and like half your shots are missing. Not anymore. This is actually a better piece of glove, because... Piece of glove. I just said that. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so we're just going to basically run with this. These enemies are actually potentially dangerous here, but we'll see what we can do. Now, again, Storm Spread doesn't work 100% of the time, so there is going to be some risk here. I went for Storm Spread because the stats, obviously, you can see where the stats increases have helped me quite a bit. And as, of course, we level back, as we level up again some more, we'll be putting points back into um, Storm uh, Stun Jacks. I'm gonna die because there's too many. No, I'm not gonna die. We're fine. Never mind. We are totally okay. Except somebody has just caused me to bleed. Which is definitely a problem. There we go. We're just gonna shoot people until they start dying. Now, you may be wondering, well, theoretically, well, actually, and that's not even a wonder. Uh, normally, I would still have stun jacks, because stun jacks can allow you to blitz through a lot of this nonsense. Actually, it's probably going to be... Since the main point of this is to demonstrate the various methods at which you go about this... Now that I've exemplified why that's used, why Storm Spread is used, we are going to go on to the main... Well, I guess it's just a cheaper version here. That's called Speed Devolving. Increase this. Now, you may be tempted to go into Quick Jacks. Don't. You really want the stun, you really want the damage. It's very important for this to not have that reduced. Now at this point, 
you can do a couple of things. For the purposes of what we have so far, I'm going to go straight into Flame Touched. Then I'm probably going to go into Vindictive Flame. Then, as the build goes on, I will level up Inquisitor up to Storm Spread. I'll probably grab Bursting Round on the way through. It is fairly handy if you're surrounded by multiple opponents. But this is really... And this is going to be glorious. This is really essentially where we're going to start from here, on a more serious note. If I'm going to be playing this the smart way instead of the idiot way, I did build full spread, so you'll understand at least conceptually what I'm talking about, but that's... that's full spread. And now we're in melee. Because I want you to observe the spread, thus the name full spread. It's pretty problematic. Now, the main issue, of course, with running full spread right off the top is, as you've noticed, energy-wise, it's kind of intense. Now, you can choose to go pretty hardcore into the um, ranged expertise. I don't usually, uh, because I don't really necessarily need the focus on the piercing damage or necessarily the elemental damage at large. This is a personal preference of mine. If you want to go full-on into the ranged expertise for the extra appearance and elemental damage, you absolutely can. And that's really, this is essentially, at its core, what we're doing here. We're gonna increase Flame Touch more, and we're just increasing Flame Touch, by the way, for the elemental damage here. Whether or not you go into Temper is entirely up to you. It does work, overall. I'm leaning more towards a person. I mean, the main benefit of temper is that all of the sub damage you're doing here, in this case for full spread, it's the physical and internal trauma. For storm spread, it's the pierce. For bursting round, it's the physical. It doesn't really help Inquisitor Seal, but if you go into Word of Renewal, which eventually we will want to, you get Steel Resolve, which does the same thing. If you choose to go into that, you don't have to. Whether or not you use Stormbox is another question entirely as well. I tend to go into Stormbox because if there's a hero surrounded by enemies, I Stormbox the hero, and he's killing all the enemies around him. Never mind the fact that I could also, if I need to, if I need to run away from him for survival purposes, I can also use that as well. So I'll usually build that, not always. It's, it's not something I'll necessarily always build, but it's something I have built uh, in certain conditions. Okay, so we... That's not what we wanted to increase. Wait, did I just overkill on cunning? Yeah. There we go. And we... That's a blunderbuss. What am I thinking? We need this belt. We don't need this... Ah, uh, no, we don't need this helmet. Thank you. So that's where we're coming at with this. And we're just... The same thing that applies to full spread here applies to the storm spread. I almost forgot what it was called for a second there. Uh, these gloves, the pierce, the, we need the pierce resistance, War shield we can sell, ring we can sell, that's sellable, that's a lot of selling stuff. These enemies are too weak for us, so we don't care. Just run up on my boy here. Granted, he's very weak right now, but still. Yeah, 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 you're all bothering me. Alright, up we pop. And we'll just report this in. I'm doing this process because I do eventually intend on finishing uh, this character at some point. I just want to make a full-on video about this so I can talk about the build in general. But you at least understand at this point the concept. Now, the fine details of this are... Partially up to you, partially up to what equipment you wind up with. Oops. You will primarily be focusing on lightning. If you wanted to exclusively do lightning, you absolutely can. Don't be afraid of doing that or trying that. It's totally fine. We are going to go to lower crossing. We can just wipe out a lot of this stuff very easily. These enemies are going to be too weak. I'm just here for the hero that we need to kill. Go ahead and go around you people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you will never catch up to me. I have the Explorer's footpads. And that's going to be a little war they can have that I don't care about. And 
And, uh, yep. I just killed him in a single shot. You're welcome. Uh, wait, Meyer. You don't technically need to kill these guys, it's just convenient to do so. It's not like they're gonna put up any kind of a fight at this point anyways, so it's kind of whatever. I probably should have actually full spread this guy, to be honest. Now, if you're concerned, for you veteran players who are seeing this and thinking I'm entirely nuts, which I still am, don't get me wrong, I am actually nuts. But if you're thinking this will never survive all the way past, well, that depends on what equipment you get. I don't have any kind of equipment prepped for this particular character, but I could probably scrounge up some stuff if I was going really hard on this. Uh, I just haven't chosen to. Uh, that's something I will probably eventually be doing. Hello, cave. Well, we'll get rid of this guy first. Hold on. Now, he's got good lightning resistance, which is why he doesn't die as fast. Yes, yes, yes. These enemies are all still way too weak to even bother killing. But we will read the dirty note over here just because it is still a little bit of extra experience. I'm sorry, it's the dirt covered note. Now, at this point, really because of the increase in level here primarily is the reason why I'm not apparently taking so much damage, even though I'm taking the same amount of damage as I normally would be. So don't quite be fooled by that. Also, I've had, I have access to uh, the full explorer set, which gives you pretty good armor, especially if you've got the uh, ancient armor plates attached to the pants and the torso. That is quite the benefit there. Now, I have the anti-venom solve on this. Uh, you might want to go with the energy one if the energy management is really becoming a out-of-control issue for you. That's, again, a personal preference. Thank you. Okay, Milton's not here. Milton must be up here. There he is. Thank you. And we just move on because these guys aren't even worth our time. I think we can go up here. Come over here. Talk to Isaac. Oop. No, get out of the way. No, get out of the way. Get out of the way so I can go in. There we go. My goodness. And we'll just read this note while we're here. You guys can get out of here while I'm waiting. we go. Thank you. All right. No, get out of the way. Thank you. But yes, this is, this does happen to be one of my uh, more favorite builds, not only because it's absolutely insane, but it works out really well, and it does give you that diversity of range and being able to still deal with melee threats as well. Now, sometimes if I'm feeling spicy, I'll build Flames of Ignifar. That, again, depends on what items I pick up for the build in general. It's, it's entirely up in the air whether or not I go in with that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Oh. Lots of Slith. I'm not really worried about the Slith Ring uh, quest. Such little experience. The ring itself is trash. It's not really that big of a deal. The enemies really aren't worth fighting at this point. That's a rather idiotic... Not White Mire. I didn't want to go White Mire. Hold on. Foggy Bank, we move to the right, we kill the uh, zombie there. Right down here. I'm just trying to get to a point where I can showcase this a little bit better with some enemies that are actually an appropriate level. Because these guys have all been a little weak, so it's a little bit of a... It looks a little better than it should. And... Let me see here. Broach out's good, sure. Read this, talk to Duncan.
These enemies are... Okay, these are actually appropriately leveled. I whiffed that because I already killed him. There we go. Shoot him regular. Come over here. Blast you. Bit of a miss. I got just a hair too close. Here we go. Yeah, basically melee range. No one's dodging that. Which is the point. Okay, these enemies are still a little weak. Now keep in mind that some of these enemies are roughly my level. I have overall five... I'm sorry, six good pieces of equipment. Well, the gloves, so seven. One pistol, that's... Actually good, yeah, so eight. Not all of my equipment is really up to a palatable standard here. So... I do have that going against me as well. No totem here, unfortunately, but that's fine. There we go. There we go. Grab that Mystic Ribbon just because it's a little bit of extra bonus experience. That's all we've got going for us right now. Too, with melee, except I missed him completely. I think we'll probably finish him off the regular way. Now, as you level up, I mean, first, obviously, we're going to finish Flame Touched. Uh, Fire Strike will obviously want to be picking up. Go all the way to Static Strike. Uh, you can actually, if you want to, you don't necessarily need to, but Static Strike is pretty interesting because even in melee, you're basically. Uh, popping people away, which means you can turn around and hit the next large opponent. Um, and a lot of large opponents, of course, you can't bop away, so there is that as well. But if you're facing a whole bunch of... Uh, you've got Explosive Strike on, and then you get Static Strike, uh, you can focus on the larger guys who are going to be the ones that you'll both be taking the most damage and dealing the most damage to, because you'll be able to more easily hit them with absolutely everything you have. And yeah, these are all roughly the... Uh, appropriate level for enemies. The occasional uh, potion has had to be used, but that's pretty much inevitable. Out of spirit potions, but that's fine. I didn't need to use it there, I just felt like it. Ta-da! And then you're just basically focusing on building up a melee repertoire with dual pistols. I probably can get all the way to, uh... Oh, I'm out of energy. There's a hero up there, too. I'm gonna at least need energy for this. I should probably do a mild readjustment of my attachments, actually. If I'm thinking honestly about it. I'll go ahead and give you the hammer. Go back. I should have... Yeah, I should have enough money to... Uh, oh, I can't pull those off yet, though, because I haven't saved Darlet, but that's fine. I think we have some spare um, pieces. And then... We go ahead and talk to you. That's fine. That is also fine. Pretty sure. Yes. And the shoes are fine. We need that energy. So we'll do that. That's fine. Yep. Okay. And back we go. I didn't buy my... 
I will. Behold, I took out a... Notice the uh, nice speed at which I took out that hero at appropriate level. Do we need to take off the yellow items, though? I'm sick of looking at them. We'll take you calmly. At this point, we don't really need to go to hyper ballistic on individual enemies. We'll actually wipe these guys out really quick. This should be pretty easy. We'll gather them all up here really quick. Come on. You guys are slow to pick up on the uptake here. There we go. And everything else after this is pure profit, basically. At least for now. I could engage a lot of these guys at range. But, that's less fun. You know, you, you start the engagement at range, you lure in a group of the melee guys, and then you wipe them all out after the fact. But sometimes you don't have that option. Sometimes they're all ranged. Okay, where is Ulgrim? Good question. Oh wait, there he is. So basically, what, you know, Storm Spread operates the same way as the Full Spread. It's just an automatic response based on, you know, whatever. Based on your default weapon attacks, that's really the only difference there. Uh, but they operate on the same principle. As I showed earlier, as I demonstrated earlier, I'll take that by lessons, because why not? We're just going to head to the left to get the undead over here. Okay, you're going to be a problem. I can see you being over there being problematic. There we go. And then how you customize this, really at minimum, I'm going to explain it like this, actually, just to... I have said this in various ways, but I think this is probably the clearest way. The core of this build is Storm Spread and um, Full Spread, the two spreads, and Dual Pistols, obviously, because the more pistols you have, the more likely you are to Storm Spread. That's just facts. And do I want to use this right now? Probably not. I feel like this would be... Mm. Well, we don't need it right now, though. We're going to go into the... Inquisitor here. We're going to go up the Storm Spread and then probably Inquisitor Seal for the protections. The energy we need. Actually, we'll probably grab this on the way through because we do need. I'm sorry, that's health regeneration, not energy regeneration. What am I. What am I on? My goodness. Booze, but anyways. <laughs> Gather you all up. I mean, you're kind of weak sauce. But those heroes sure won't be. The real beauty is that I can shoot these guys from far away without necessarily having to go into the melee that you would normally need. These guys are fine. But we actually are going to take care of you really quick first. Boom. There we go. Boom. Absolutely smack this fool down. Excellent. Okay. We can sell this. Alright, we've taken care of that little issue. We're going to go to Burwich Village, clear out those guys, grab the Dereni book, grab the fabric, rescue the apprentice really quick. It'll take less time than you think. I think, yeah, I can probably take on, um, Krieg, actually. Get nice and close in for that. Bring it on, son. Now 
Now these guys are skinny enough where you'll notice every once in a blue moon, some of those, just like what happened just there, it'll slip by. It happens. It's not a big deal, generally speaking. Alright, good. Come in here. Wipe all you guys out. And, yay. Okay. Uh, you know what? We'll kill you guys because we can. At close range, it functions as a beautiful AoE. Now, the reason why we're going to go for Storm Spread next is because once we get Storm Spread, then it becomes more justifiable to pick up Vindictive Flame, because the more often we shoot, the more often we trigger that. We pick up Fire Strike, because once we get to it, the very least Explosive Strike, and then uh, we get a nice AoE on that, so all of these enemies that are standing around us take even more damage. If you think Explosive Strike and Bursting Round, which we will, uh, will also be picking up later, if you think those two are strong at range, wait until you get them into melee. You may possibly, if you've had enough, enough <clears throat> if only I could speak, if you've had enough experience with explosive round or bursting round, then you'll probably already understand what I'm talking about here, but it's potentially quite devastating. Here, why don't you all gather around? Thank you. To, uh, hit people in melee with those if there's enough of them there. It's also really at that point that you're gonna really start to see you being able to preempt a lot of enemies with the initial shots. See if there's anything worth actually using. This does more damage. I need more cunning. Right. Can we get that much cunning? No. So we'll wait on that. That's it. Resistances on this build are fantastic. Get rid of that. That's interesting. We can get that cunning, though. That. We replace this. Suck that on. Oh, that's even better. That went here. Nice. Okay. Give me that creek skipper. You just run over this way. I'll just get rid of you really quick. Whatever. Not even an issue. Come here. There you go. No, 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 none of that. I didn't actually ask about the fabric quest, so I actually have to check all the chests here because I'm not sure which ones have the fabric and which ones don't. That was not quite as well aimed as it could have been. talking about when you can preempt your melee and then they're going to come in for the melee we're going to wait a second boom wait for it here we go going to use a potion here furies are kind of problematic excellent Is that all three fabrics? No, that's only two. The last one's up here, then. Get out of my way. I didn't actually plan on throwing them that way, but okay. Okay. And... 
assault. So you may be wondering, actually, this occurred to me that you might actually be wondering this. Why flame touched before a storm spread? Well, essentially, so we can have a nice massive boost in the damage of the storm spread as I find more items that increase lightning damage. We can stack that up even further. It's kind of just like a nice base foundation here. We're actually going to lower these in. Boom. There we go. Good. And the reason why we don't go all the way to temper yet is because we only need to go this far for full spread, at least initially. Will I go for temper? Maybe. I'm not 100% sure yet. I probably will because I do want to do the retaliation damage just because I can. Essentially. Okay, good. This is open. That's nice. Come over here. Melee this. Good. Here we go. Wipe you out quietly by yourself. Wipe you out quietly by yourself. Take you out and then melee these guys. Haha, I got you before you could run away. Okay, good. Go rescue the apprentice and then just go for Krieg. Hello. And then these guys are going to come in. Boom. Caught on the bookshelf. Okay, sure. That was quite effective. Come here. I wasn't expecting to do that much damage to you, honestly, but okay. I need to slow down my attack speed. Not a problem, though. Again, this is veteran, so this will be a little bit different on uh, elite, but we'll get there. Don't you worry about it. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, you can do this build on, you can do this build with melee, and while you can mime it pretty effectively, the problem is, is that melee. There's just a single zombie there, whatever. Melee weapons can't use full spread. Not full spread. Storm spread. Which is one of the foundational points of this build. So, while we could, at the end of the day, it's not the best idea. Also, we're going to go ahead and spare Dorini's life here, because killing him at the uh, Kronley's hideout is better for your reputation. Alright, now before we go rampaging off, this is Dureni's note, right? Yeah. He needs a spirit bound ointment. Spirit bound ointment. Spirit bane, whatever. And we should probably go with a royal jelly ointment as well, just because I'm somewhat aggressive. 
Oop, nope. Don't care about that. Store the single remaining of these crystals. Deliver the... I don't have the reputation for this. Never mind. That's fine. Oop. Because I haven't... Yeah, that's fine. I didn't do the, um... What do you call it? Hold on, actually, wait a minute. While I'm here... I can get more energy here. Da, 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 da. There we go. So, yes. Anyways, now that I'm done all prepping and everything, uh, essentially, yes. The My inspiration for this was, hey, look, I can use the storm spread with these guns. They do more damage melee range. Hmm, how can I brutalize, brutally take advantage of this? This is what I came up with. Now again, there are variations depending on what items you use, your personal playstyle, etc. There are a variety of different ways you can build this. I personally prefer retaliation just because the idea of using retaliation with dual pistols is just really awesomely funny to me. I don't know why, but it just really appeals to me. Uh, and for that specific reason alone, I generally tend to go with retaliation. At least, uh, well, I don't go full retaliation, I tend to splash it in, I go temper, I go vindictive flame, I go Olsman's Chosen. It's a pretty fun time. Olsman's Chosen, like I said, uh, not Olsman's Chosen, Vindic vindictive flame at the very least also does give you the benefit of having more opportunities for storm spread to activate as well, which you do really want. So I do at least recommend, even if you aren't looking to go into retaliation, I do urge you to at least consider utilizing Vindictive Flame with this build, because it allows you to just spam Storm Spread a bit more often. Also, you run faster. Nobody dislikes running faster. Actually, we're going to go over here and melee these guys. There we go. There we go. Oh, you're still alive. There we go. And here we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Boom. Right in the thick of it. Let's go. Ah, that was a bit overkill. I don't think I'm gonna need to full spread you. You, yeah. Oh, you survived. Okay. <laughs> sure. Now, if you're thinking this is like a, a really try hard build, it's not. This is mostly for fun is it if can let me phrase that can it be incredibly effective yes it can i have used this to pull off some pretty impressive stunts but it's still mostly just for the, the kind of the lulls it's it's an amazingly fun build to use once you get it you know worked up to where you want it to i mean as long as you have storm spread and full spread and again, I do recommend Vindictive Flame at the very least. You pretty much are free to go with whatever. If you want to focus, like I said, 100% on the electric damage, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, that would require very specific equipment. Temper increases both fire and lightning, so I tend to splash both in. Uh, temper, of course, is also fairly handy. I'll usually not use the explosives, but they can work. I actually might in this one, but it, that depends. 
It also is an interesting way of allowing you to dual wield the pistols and very effectively use Aura of Censure as well, which is fairly interesting and a concept I really enjoy. But there are a lot of cool things you can do with this particular combination. And with the idea of dual wielding pistols for the melee damage. It's a, it's a really fun, I really love playing this. I'm not sure how I'm going to build it this time. I've gone through a lot of different variations of this because it is one of the most fun things I've played. Now, uh, I've mentioned before that certain class combinations are my favorite. This is true. Broadly speaking, more of those, more builds for those I find enjoyable. But this one specific way of building, or roughly building, the Purifier is just to me an absolute insane blast. And I'm just a big fan. I mean, these guys are not too worrisome at this point. Creek will be fun. We'll melee you. Ta-da! Well, melee is a rough approximation of that one. They were a little too spread out. These enemies are a hair too small to really emphasize what I'm talking about. It's not until you start seeing regular Chthonic enemies that you really start to see where this clusters together. They're map terrains also. The larger ones really emphasize this. It's a pretty magical time. Boom. Hello. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poison. Very rarely do I see a crystal back here. Interesting. Oh, hello. All right. And pop. It's fine. <laughs> I just waited for my storm jacks to come up, or whatever they're called. Stun jacks. Actually die here. Let's run back here and blow this up. I'll blow you up. What is that from? That's from a movie. But I can't remember which one. It's an old movie. Notice that I've with the uh, the psh, psh, ectoplasm that I have enough energy regeneration to mostly get my energy back whenever I start throwing a large quantity of full spreads out there. I think we can melee you. No, nope, I missed. I aimed wrong. That's on me though. Hold on. I'm gonna get messy, huh? Alright. 
I had Word of Renewal, I wouldn't need to run around like this quite as much. Or uh, Inquisitor Seal. But we're not quite there yet. Yeah? Tell me about that, eh? Alright. Now usually there's some dweebs right here. These goons. Yeah. Just like clockwork. Hold on, I forgot to use my stuff. Silly me. No, I don't need that. This is what I need, there we go. Now keep in mind that he's supposed to be the guy that, you know, kind of you figure out how to learn patterns and dodge and weave and all that. This is probably where we're going to have to go a little bit harder on the dodging and stuff. How much damage is that going to do? Not bad. If only he got stunned. But that's what we get Inquisitor's Seal for later on. Probably gonna need to dodge away for a bit, heal up slightly. That's fine. I just didn't want him shooting his stupid crossbow at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This scales very well into the late game. Oh, yay. I mean, it's still a ribbon, though, so we'll equip it anyways. Wait, that chain belt was lightning damage. Nice. I'll take the small hit resistances for that lightning damage, at least for the time being. All right. And then... Is it finished? The warden's defeat is... Yes, yes, yes. So you must be the tie before... And now we can deliver the fabric, I think. Yes. Now, just to emphasize some of the points that I've been making, I'm going to go into the depraved sanctuary really quick and just blast through that. Because those enemies are going to be a little higher in level than what I'm at. Kind of as a proof of concept. Um, will I do fantastically? Probably not, no, because my equipment isn't that great. I don't even have a relic on, which I probably should, but whatever. I'll wait until I'm 25 for that. Oh, you're not even worth my time. Get out of here. Shouldn't take me too long to whack my way through this really quick. What level are these guys, though? Ah, uh, yeah, they're weak sauce out here, so we're just going to pretend they don't exist. Get out of my way. This is fine. over here first because these guys usually come over and attack you anyways so it's kind of like why wouldn't you come over here and get them first all right that's a little messy gather up there you go actually loop around here so our constitution can come back whack these guys you're by yourself, so we're just going to shoot you. No, we're not. Hit you with that really quick. 
Boom. Beautiful. You're taking too long to kill. Crack this open. That's about what I expected. This too, what the heck. Yeah, well, wait, what is this? Reduced health, but more resistant to vitality. That's nice. I'll take it. Just get right up in their face and shoot him. Once you get that, once you get into the habit, it's hard to break. So be careful with this. <laughs> don't switch. Don't switch very suddenly to a standard ranged build, please. You will have a hard time. <laughs> I know I do. Problematically, I'm working on a a more traditional ranged dual wielding pistol user as well. So this is going to be fairly interesting for me to try to balance out and get out of the habit of, especially since they're both dual wielders. My goodness. Oh, hold on. Gather up, gentlemen. I, well, whatever you are, actually. Uh, demons. Boom. Ah, uh, well, whatever. You guys didn't want to stand next to each other or anything like that? Come here, son. There you go. Oh, he... He dodged. Well, kind of. Get out of here. Oh, you got a lot of cronies here. Here. Why don't you guys all join these guys up over here? Come on. Ah, uh, good enough. Know what you're doing, but sure. Oh, hello. Random Maven's hood there. All right. Sure. Let me just take you out regular. I think. No totem over there, but that's fine. You were just going to stand there and watch me, weren't you? Alright, nice. Yep, that means nothing to me. Oh no, you've drained mild amounts of my health. Whatever will I do? Kind of a whiff. A little better. That was nice. Ah, oh, it was too far away. I pulled that off just a hair too early. There we go. Basically, get right in the guy. Throw out your sickle. There it is. Oh, nope. That was your fatal mistake right there. Ta-da! Ah, that was a miss. Some of them dodged. Well, I still killed some of them, but it wasn't quite the, uh, fantastic results I was expecting. Come on up. Gather up. There you go. Nope. Oh, hold on. Let's use our constitution really quick. Because I have no health potions. We'll hide behind this pillar. Now we're good. Now we're good. I think we can... Yeah. What is this? Vamp braces. Ah, uh, no. We don't do vitality or chaos damage. 
and physics utility pack. We actually won't really probably be needing this, so that's fine. Nice gun. Core level 26, that's fine. So anyways, uh, we'll respawn back at Devil's Crossing, which we'll, is where we'll need to go anywho. But that's the basic concept so far. Uh, you're basically just going to run up full spread. And then, I, again, I got flame touched this early so I could boost up the damage out of full spread. And then we're going to work our way up to storm spread so we can do the same thing with our regular attacks. And then after this, we're going to start slapping on very specific abilities. I think the first thing we'll want is the Inquisitor Seal. It'll give us some damage absorption that'll increase our health regeneration. It will. Uh, you can just slap it down at your feet and melee whoever you need to. It's, it's a wonderful thing, especially when you get to this point where it's boosting your damage as well. That's extra fire retaliation. It's a magical time. Once we get this, then I'll probably move into Fire Strike at least, to the Explosive Strike level, probably to Static Strike. And on the way I'll grab Olzuin's Wrath, and I'm going to grab Temper. I probably won't grab Blast Shield, I probably won't grab Granado, at least not right now. I'll probably end at, at Static Strike, at least for the time being. Go back to Inquisitor, grab the Word of Renewal, grab Bursting Round and Aura of Censure. I may actually, once I get done with Storm Spread, I may go all the way to Aura of Censure just so I have that reduced target damage and that burn aura around me. That might just be very helpful. Uh, I'll have to decide. I, I definitely want Aura of Censure because I want to really emphasize the kind of really fun time you can have with melee dual-wielding pistols. So I'll probably alternate between this character and the other character that I've got going just for the kind of kicks here. Um, I hope this at least begins to answer, or at least answers your major questions about the build and how it works. I did have the brief moment with Storm Spread specifically to kind of emphasize how that's going to work in the future, how it combines with Storm Spread. This video was directly inspired by, I would like to give a shout out here very specifically, by the user Vinicius Atade. Uh, thank you very much for the request. Glad to fulfill it. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope everyone else enjoyed this as well. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you have any f additional comments, questions, concerns, ideas, or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. I, am, I read them all, and I am more than happy to answer whatever I can. And uh, have a great 24 hours.